dear me as my little mask. He is known as the apostle to the slaves and honored with the titles of equal to the apostles and teacher of the Greek nation. Saint was master's born of Moses in the year 1714 in a village called Mela Bethlehem in the region of Atolia in central Greece. He was a shepherd boy in the mountains who felt a yearning to learn to read and write. But educated people were very rare in mountain villages. So his parents sent him to a nearby village to be tutored by Hero Deacon At the time, education was for the clergy and the nasties, not for the humble shepherds. He studied, tutored other students, and simultaneously worked on the land for many years. Eventually, his studies led him to Mount Athos, where he studied at the newly established school, the Athoniana, under the famous lecturer, Evgenios Gulbat. He became well versed in both divine and secular wisdom. After a few years, his deeper yearnings could not be satisfied by the philosophy of this world, and he embraced the true philosophy of the heavenly kingdom, entering the monastic life at the monastery of the Uther. There he was tonsured with the name of Mas, and soon after he remained a priest. Then he made the momentous and not easy to make decision to leave his monastery and embrace the life of a missionary. This is what he wrote. Studying the holy and sacred gospel, I found it in many and different teachings, which were all pearls, diamonds, treasures. Among other things, I also found this teaching, in which Christ says to us, No Christian, man, or woman should be concerned only with himself, how he can be saved, but must be concerned also with his brethren, so that they may not fall into sin. That teaching gnawed at me inside my heart for many years, just as a worm eats away at wood. I sought the advice of my spiritual fathers, bishops and patriarchs who gave me their blessing. So I abandoned my own advancement, my own good, and went out to walk from place to place to teach my brethren. He himself believed that he would be lost because he had voluntarily chosen to leave his monastery the place where monks are saved to teach the people. He said, because our race has fallen into ignorance, I said to myself, let Christ lose me one sheep and let him win the others. Perhaps God's compassion and your prayers will save me too. St. Cosmas set out initially from Constantinople and preached throughout Thrace and Macedonia. He travelled all over northern Greece and even visited some of the islands. He mainly went to small villages, especially in Albania and Epiros, where education was non-existent, banditry was rampant, conversions to Islam were commonplace, and even the appearance of an Orthodox priest was a rare sight. He avoided the cities where he knew that other priests resided who could teach the people and went instead to the places that, he, that had been abandoned by the rich, the educated, and even the priests. On his travels, St. Cosmas found a downtrodden people who were losing their faith and their heritage. The people of Greece were like a drought parched garden that upon tasting the first drops of rain began to immediately revive and reach towards the source of that life-giving water. 
The effect that samples must have on the regions visited was immediate and unprecedented. Village by village, region by region, people began to receive a basic education. Churches reopened, conversions to Islam ceased, and thieves left their dens and became reformed citizens. Upon entering a new village, Sandals must would plant a wooden cross in the ground out in the open fields or squares. Then he would stand on a bench or box borrowed from the villagers and preach to the people who came to hear him. Not only am I not worthy to teach you, but not even worthy to kiss your feet, for each of you is worth more than the entire world. The words I speak to you, my brethren, are not my own, but those of the Holy Spirit from the Holy Scriptures. What I tell you is the same as if God himself comes down and speaks to you. And if you do not put it into practice, I shall be saddened with tears in my eyes. I tell you this, rejoice that you are Orthodox Christians, and weep for those who walk in darkness. Hundreds of years of church occupation had left the common people of the Greek villages in the darkness of ignorance, not only of their Christian faith, but also of place language and education. St. Cosmas, as a sanctified vessel of the Holy Spirit, gave his life to enlightened Greek people and achieved a staggering transformation throughout the whole country. He lit a flame in the hearts of the people which burned brightly for many years after his death and paved the way for the liberation of Greece from the Ottoman yoke. On the 24th of August 1779, St. Cosmas was led by a group of Turkish soldiers on the pretext of escorting him to preach the Pasha. He saw through the facade, but calmly followed them to the place of his execution and blessed the four corners of the universe with great joy and offered thanksgiving to God. He was then hanged from a tree and gave up his soul to the Lord. His holy relics were miraculously retrieved by the local Christians and have continued to be a source of miracles to this day. His veneration was officially recognised by the Patriarch Constantinople in 1961.
Ιούδας, στο σκοτάδι της Κλαδιάς. Ήταν λαμπρός, μου έδειξε ότι και εγώ μπορώ να ζήσω την Ανάσταση, την εσωτερική ελευθερία μέσα στο σκοτάδι της Κλαδιάς. Μετά το, μετά το, α, μετά το κήρυγμα, μοιράζε μικρά στα πατάκια. Δεν το έχω βγάλει από το λαιμό μου αυτό το σταποτάκι, από αυτή τη στιγμή.
τα μέρη μας και στο κήρυγμά του μας είπε «Το κορμί σας αν σας το κάψουν, τα πράγματά σας αν σας τα πάρουν, να μη σας νοιάζει, δώστε τα, δεν είναι δικά σας, ψυχή και πιστός σας χρειάζονται». Αυτά τα δύο όλος ο κόσμος να πέσει δεν μπορεί να σας τα πάρει εκτός αν τα δώσετε από το θέλημά σας. Αυτά τα δύο να τα φυλάκετε, να μην τα χάσετε. Ψυχή και Χριστός. Από τον Χριστόν 
μη γονίζεστε και από την Εκκλησία. Η Αγία Εκκλησία είναι ο σαν ημάν. Όταν σφάλει ο Υιός, το μαλώνει και πάλι τον συμπαθά. Η Αγία Εκκλησία είναι μία πηγή και ποτίζει όλους τους διψασμένους και να ευλογεί ο Χριστός τους ανθρώπους και να φυλάει την χώρα σας, τα χωράφια σας, τα αμέλια σας, τον τόπο σας και όλα τα έργα από τον χειρό σας. Επίσης, λαχταρούσε να γνωρίσουν οι σκλαβωμένοι αδελφοί του, τους θησαυρούς της Ορθοδοξίας και να μορφωθούν χριστιανικά. Γι' αυτό τόλισε. Από το σχολείο μανθάνουνε τι είναι Θεός, τι είναι Αγία Τριάς, τι είναι Άγιο, αρετή και κακή, τι είναι ψυχή, τι είναι σώμα. Ανοίγουν τα μάτια, τα μάτια των ευσεβών και ορθοδόξων χρησιανών να μαθάνουν τα μυστήρια, διότι χωρίς εκκλησία και χωρίς σχολεία περιπατούμε εις το σκότος.
a le ferofi, pote, 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 η Βυζαντινή Αυτοκρατορία με τη Μεγάλη Εκκλησιά μα, με 400 σύμβαντα και 62 καμπάνε, ήταν ελληνική και ο Χριστό λατρευόταν από όλου. Και ήμασταν ήρεμοι. Όχι σε δάμπλα παιδιά που μα κατάντησε η αμάθεια. Τον κοίταγε. Καλά, καλά, τον πατροκοσμά, ο καπετάνιος. Πάτε, άσε να φωνάξω και τους άλλους, να ακούσουν όλα τούτα που μου λες.
In 1779, Father Gusmas was travelling through northern Epidus near the township of Depeleni. Whilst preaching to the crowds there, he was attacked by people paid by the Kotsapasides, those in authority who felt strongly against the work of Father Gusmas. A violent scuffle took place, from which Father Gusmas escaped. He hastily made his way to the streets of Depeleni, where a woman at an open door beckoned to him to come inside in order to hide, which he did. Shortly after, when those who were persecuting Father Gusmas arrived at her house asking if she had seen him, she told them to keep going, indicating that Father Gusmas had just passed on and they would catch him if they were quick. This woman was the notorious Hamko, the mother of Ali Pasha. Night came, and Ali Pasha, 35 years old at the time, came to the house. The three of them sat to eat at the table, where Hamko, knowing the prophetic gift of Father Gusmas, began to ask questions regarding her son's future career. He will become great, replied Father Gusmas. Will I take Berati? asked Ali. You will take it, said Father Gusmas. Ali was pleased. His eyes lit up. After a while, he asked, Premeti, Iranina, will I take them? Father Gusmas looked him in the eye and said, both Premeti and Yanina will be yours. You will also take Breveza. He then added, You must always remember to love and support the Christians if you want your power, authority to remain with your successors. The next day, Ali showed Father Gusmas out of the town. But before they went their separate ways, he asked one final question about his future. If he would go to the police, Constantinople. Father Gusmas answered him with a pensive look. And to the police you will go, but with a red beard. Ali remained pleased. He did not understand the last phrase, which signified, he would go to the Sultan at Constantinople with a bloodied head, as indeed happened when he was killed. Some days passed after this meeting, and Father Cosmas was martyred at Galicondasi. Ali was saddened and took revenge for the death of the saint, killing many. After taking Berati and Ioannina, as Father Cosmas had prophetically said he would, Ali built a magnificent monastery in the saint's honour, at the site of his martyrdom, spending large sums of money. He also arranged the construction of a silver case gilded with diamonds for the purpose of keeping Father Cosmas' holy skull in it. Furthermore, he enforced a feast day for Father Cosmas. It is extraordinary that Father Cosmas was first pronounced a saint, not by the Church or the Patriarchate, but by a non-Christian, by a Muslim. Written records show that the feast for Saint Cosmas was kept from the year 18 15, by order of Ali Pasha, who wrote to all the church hierarchs that the people were not to open the marketplace on the day of the 24th of August. In fact, Ali Pasha organized a most magnificent litany to take place in Ioannina in honor of Saint Cosmas. He even had the saint's holy relics brought from the place of his martyrdom to Ioannina for this occasion. All the inhabitants of the city, the clergy, monastics and lay people, young and old, participated in this procession, some holding candles, others holding silver censers, 
the crowd chanting Giri Eleison. Following right at the end were Ali Pasha and his wife, Kira Basiliki, dressed in black, with eyes directed to the ground in respect. And standing before the holy relics of St. Cosmas, every person in the great crowd bowed to the ground in veneration, following the example of Ali Pasha. He and Kira Basiliki venerated the holy relics with great awe. The reverence shown by Ali Pasha, a Muslim, to St. Cosmas, a Christian, drew strong condemnation from fellow Muslims. And yet, Ali Pasha's bold response to them was, Bring to me a Muslim like this Christian, and I will kiss even his feet.
and the glory of his fathers was to strengthen and renew the faith of the ordinary people. They influence a dynamic return to the roots of Orthodox tradition and a counterbalance to those aspects of the European Enlightenment which was foreign to the Orthodox Roma. Saint Cosmas cultivated the people with the Word of God and Saint Nicodemus emphasized the central role of worship. And in this way, they recognized there the unity of the enslaved Orthodox people. The renewal that they spearheaded prevented the people falling victim to either the pressure to Islamize or to those aspects of Western culture and education which was anti-God, anti-religion, and anti-church. Their achievement was to educate the Yenos with the holy traditions of the fathers of the church, which links the best of classical Greece or Hellenism with Christianity. This lies at the heart of our cultural identity, the cultural identity of the Yenos. St. Cosmas said, we speak only of what the Holy Spirit inspired the Holy Prophets, Apostles, and Fathers of our Church to write for us. Through St. Cosmas, we see Christ's promise in action. If you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move! from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. The impossible became possible. His words and actions touched the ordinary Greeks, the villagers, the clefts, the children, the village priests, those who work on the land, the artisans in the towns, the merchants, and sailors on their boats. In this way, he and others paved the way for the Greek Revolution. He and others sowed the seed which led to the miracle of the Greek War of Independence and the creation of a free Greek nation. The author of School of Adonis.
theological college, the Greek Orthodox day schools, the Greek afternoon schools, Sunday schools, the various Orthodox youth groups and on mothers, the Greek Orthodox Christian Society, NLC and Giglo, all of us here this evening, we are not here by chance, but because of St. Cosmas' enduring legacy that is felt even here in Australia today. His untiring work imbued in our ancestors hope and faith, united with their faith in God, they were able to bring about their long desired freedom to live and worship as Orthodox Christians in their own land. Your folks Laiki ke kiliki, meti ilia piski el pita ke ipimoni tu guja, epidioki na na diafilansi tu si sabus tis elen ortodoxi si loronjasmas, ke na tu paradoxi si genies tu takolutisun, ya nazisume, oli sosti elines ortodoxi tis yani se afiti evloi meni gi, zinto ielaga. Εγώ με τη σειρά μου απλά μεταβιβάζω τις ευχές του Συμβασμιωτάτου που αυτή τη στιγμή βρίσκεται στην Κωνσταντινούπολη και με πολύ χαρά πιστεύω απόψε θα του μιλήσω για αυτό το όμορφο έργο που όλοι μας παρακολουθήσαμε και όλοι μας έχουμε ανάγκη στην εποχή που ζούμε διότι τα μηνύματα και βέβαια το παράδειγμα του Αγίου είναι κάτι που όλοι μας έχουμε ανάγκη και ίσως ακόμα πιο περισσότερα εμείς εδώ στη σημερινή και μακρινή Αυστραλία. Συγχαίρω τα παιδιά όλα και όσους βέβαια συμμετείχανε σε αυτό το έργο αλλά συγχαίρω και τους γονείς τους και βέβαια και τους παππούδες και γιαγιάδες που είναι εδώ και τόσα χρόνια φέρνουν αυτά τα παιδιά σε αυτά τα έργα για να συμμετέχουν και να κρατούν την ταυτότητά μας, την ορθόδοξο πίστη αλλά και την ελληνική ταυτότητα ζωντανή. I take just a moment of your time to congratulate all of you for Firstly, your participation and for truly being uh, a mirror image of what St. Cosmas is. Your wonderful work replicates his messages to a world which very much has a need to hear these things today. Our Souls, obviously, as we all know, yearn for God and it is through such works that we have the opportunity to come closer to what is truly beautiful and humbling. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. I congratulate all of you on behalf of His Eminence who sends His blessings and well wishes, but very much so I congratulate the parents the grandparents and all those who worked tirelessly all these years for the Greek Orthodox Christian Society, which is truly a jewel in the crown of our Archdiocese. God bless you all. Sebastian, you're not a single, and you're not a single. 
και μεταφέρεται απλώ η δική μα αγάπη και σεβασμό του πρώτου χρόνου και για τι ευλογίε που δίνει η Ιστορία τη Ελληνική μα Ενώση. Αδελφοί, αυτά και καλή δύναμη ο Θεό να μα να μας, να μας δίνει τέτοιε και άλλε τέτοιε εκδηλώσει. Ελπίζουμε πριν το τέλο τη χρονιά να έχουμε τουλάχιστον άλλη μια να το πιάσουμε.